Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today I have this question on the board for you guys. So why don't we just get into the question? Well, many of you will actually already recognize this question because we've already done it. But in that video, that was only method one. Today I'm going to show cast to you method two, which is a much easier method. So why don't we just look at this? A capital pi is we are multiplying all of these brackets together, right? <clears throat> but we see that in all of these brackets, we all have a power of two. But we don't like a power of two, right? We just like a power of one. So how do we do that? Well, the easiest way that will come to mind is factorize this. But we can't factorize this with just real numbers. So that is why in this method, we are going to use complex numbers. So we know that one is negative i squared, right? So now since it's negative i squared, then we can easily factorize this. So this is equal to capital pi, k okay, goes from one to six of x k squared minus i squared. And now we can factorize this using the normal ways equals capital pi, k okay, goes from one to six, x to the k plus i times x k minus i. <clears throat> okay, and there's also a capital pi property, which says that we can actually separate the capital pi's into two separate ones. So equals capital pi, k goes from one to six of the first term, and then multiply by capital pi of the second term. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm going to show you a very common property that we have for polynomials. So, for any polynomial, <clears throat> we can always factorize this polynomial if we know its roots. And in our case, we do. It's x1 to x6. Well, how do we factorize it? Well, we can just do x minus x1, x minus x2, all the way until x minus x6. And this is an identity, which means that this is always true for any value of x, no matter real or complex. And also, if you would like, you can write this in capital pi notation. K goes from 1 to 6 of x minus xk. Now, we want to somehow make this similar to one of these capital pi's. Well, how do we do that? Well, why don't we let x to be i? Since this is an identity, x equals to anything, even i will be satisfied. So, p of i is equal to capital pi k goes from 1 to 6 of i minus xk, right? So we see that this capital pi is very similar to the second capital pi, but it's not exactly the same. What it's missing is a negative 1. But we can't just multiply by one negative 1 because there are six brackets. So we need to multiply by six negative ones. But negative 1 to the power of 6 is just 1, so it stays the same. So it, it, this is just equal to capital pi, k equals 1 to 6, of xk minus i. Nothing else changes. So we see that this second, this second capital pi is just p of i. So now the question is, what is p of i? Well, it's pretty easy and straightforward, just plugging i to all of the x's, and the result will be, the result will be this. And now we can do some cancellations. Cancel, cancel, and also cancel, cancel. Okay, so now I'm going to collect the like terms. So we have 2ai minus ci. And now if we factor out an i, it will be i times 2a minus c. So now we know that this second capital pi is just this, and I'm going to write it here. 
Okay, so now how about the first capital pie? Well, we want that capital pie to look something in this form. Well, how do we do that? Well, if I first copy down the first capital pie. Then we see that, first of all, this is negative. So why don't we multiply six negative ones again? And of course, it will just be one. So the signs stay the same. And the inside will be negative x to the k minus i. But this doesn't look anything like this, right? But just a simple swap of terms will make you think differently. So we keep the capital pi. But if we just swap these two terms around, negative i minus x to the power xk, then we see that x should be negative i, right? So isn't this just p negative i? Yes, it is. So all we have to do is we have to figure out p of negative i. This, and now, if we cancel and collect like terms, then it will just be ci minus 2ai. And if we factor out the i again, it will be i times c minus 2a. So now, if I write this here again. Okay, so now that we have both of these capital pi's, then if we multiply them together, then it will all go back to this. So, capital pi, k equals 1 to 6, of xk squared plus 1 is equal to, so this times this, i squared is negative 1. And if we put the negative 1 into this, then the output will just be 2a minus c squared. And look, this is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this is the second method of solving this very beautiful question. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoy my video and you want more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.